The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. What I see people doing is continually trying to put on the armor of light and they have not cast off all the works of darkness yet. You see? And so they're trying to put on that armor of light that won't quite fit because they got all this junk still hand- hanging all around them. Isn't it true? Okay. Verse 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ... Oh, sorry, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, uh, not in chamberling and wantonness, uh, not in strife and envyings, uh, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and make not provision for the flesh. Put on Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. You see that right there? Okay. See, my dear people, we have a new commandment. We have a love commandment. We have... A love nature. How many of you know we have God's nature within us? Amen. We covered that this morning. Amen? Okay. And then verse 13, it says, Not in strife or envying. You see that there? Underline that in your Bible there. It says, Not in strife and envying. And then in verse 14, it says, put, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, become imitators of God. Become imitators of God and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And verse 12, it says, in other words, cast off the works of darkness because they're not from God, you see? Now, I want to point out something here specifically this evening about strife. Strife is dangerous to a believer. How many of you know that? Strife is dangerous to a believer. And that's the only way I know how to explain it when I uh, meditate on it. Strife is dangerous, really dangerous to a believer. When a believer is walking in strife, he is walking according to the flesh. I'll say that again. Strife is dangerous to a believer, and when the believer is walking in strife, he is walking according to the flesh. Now turn with me to the book of James, chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. James 3. Beginning with verse 10. I'm going to expound a little bit this evening about strife. I don't think people are totally aware of what strife can cause. Or what can happen. I don't even know that the truth sets you free. Yes. Beginning of verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren. Now first of all, who's he talking to here? Yes. Us. So out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth the same place, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no water both yield salt water and fresh? If you notice there in verse 13, it says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good good conversation his works. In other words, how's he doing it? By his will? Isn't he? By his will? With meekness and wisdom. You see that using his wisdom, there's will there? Verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, in other words, this strife, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. You see that there? It comes from the flesh. Verse 16, and this this is where it's dangerous, my dear people. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. You see that there? Where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. That's the reason why God's saying, Therefore be ye imitators of God and not the enemy. Imitate God, not the enemy. Imitate God and not the flesh. My dear people, the desire of the flesh is to get upset with someone and to stay bitter towards them. That's the desire of the flesh, isn't it? 
And that's the reason why the Word of God says, Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy Him and follow Him. His example, not the enemy, not the world. But you see, my dear people, if we truly walk by the Spirit, we are to become imitators of God because it is a battle of the wills. It is a battle of the wills. And we have a choice. We have a choice. How many of you know that strife is generated and fueled by the tongue? How many of you know that? Strife is generated and fueled by the tongue. I could do a whole message just nothing on the tongue. But you see, putting to death this fleshly habit begins by our controlling the words that we speak about others. We have a free will, my dear people. Huh? But you see, we are to imitate God, not the enemy and not the flesh. Uh, you know, Proverbs. How many of you that sit and just read Proverbs? I want to show you a few things in Proverbs. Turn with me to Proverbs 26. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Proverbs. Uh, Solomon wrote Proverbs, wasn't it? He's pretty smart. In Proverbs 26... Thank you, Jesus. In Proverbs 26, beginning with verse 20, I'm going to give you three or four scriptures here, but in, Pro in Proverbs, in Proverbs 26, verse 20, the Word of God says, I thought this was quite good, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. You see that there? Where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. In other words, strife is brought by tail bearers. Or in other words, the tongue. The tongue. And then we read in, verse, in Proverbs 26, verse 22, it says, The words of a tail bearer are as wounds. In other words, they can hurt people. They can hurt people. In fact, it says there, And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly because they hurt your spirit. They bruise your spirit. And then in Proverbs 29, verse 22, the Word of God says, An angry man stirreth up strife. You know, the hardest time it is to control your will is when you get angry. Isn't it? When you get angry, when you get mad, when you get upset. What happens? The devil comes in like a flood, and I mean everything gets wet. Isn't it true? Huh? <clears throat> Want me to tell you how to combat that? Easy? Easy? Huh? You want the secret? Do you really want the secret? How many? Do you really want the secret? Shut your mouth. <laughs> huh? Huh? Shut your mouth. Amen? Is that so hard? <laughs> Honey, did you bring a roll of tape? <laughs> huh? Just shut your mouth. I thank God for my pastor that, that I come up under. You know, he was a, he was a tough old boy. And he taught, but he taught us right. He taught us right. Amen? Just shut your mouth. My pastor used to tell me, Ron, if you're going to have something to say that's edifying, don't say it at all. Isn't it true? So just shut your mouth. Count to ten. Do something. You have a free will. You, you get the point? You get the point? We have a free will. You see? We don't have to fall into the trap and the snares of the devil. We don't have to fall into the trap and the, and, the, and, the, and the snares of the enemy in our stinking flesh. Just shut your mouth. All we do is get our foot in it anyway. <laughs> Amen? You see, a tail bearer or whisperer is one who goes about telling what a certain person has said or done to offend them. Amen? And then in Proverbs 17, 9, the Word of God says, well, I'll tell you, Solomon was pretty smart here. In chapter 17, verse 9, the Word of God says, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, 
In other words, he that's walking in forgiveness is seeking love. You see that there? But he that repeateth a matter separate friends. He that repeateth matters separate friends. You want to get rid of a friend quick? Start talking about them. Huh? That's right. You start talking about them. You know what? First thing you know, you can't stand to be around them. And they don't even know why. The devil will see to it. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? Huh? That's right. That's right. It, my dear people, let's wake up. It's a strategy of Satan. It's a strategy of the evil one to destroy you. To destroy every one of us. And that's the reason why Paul calls these thoughts fiery darts because once they get into the tongue, it becomes a raging fire. You see, my dear people, the mark of a mature Christian is their ability to control their tongue. It's that simple. Did you know that? Isn't it? Isn't it true? That's the mark of a mature Christian. If they can control their tongue, they're relatively mature. You see, that's the reason why the Lord tells us that we are to be imitators of God and not the enemy and not of the flesh. You see, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12.10. He's the, the accuser of the brethren. How do you think that Jesus Christ himself got put on the cross? Huh? That's right. By the accuser. By the accuser. So, the biblical standard for believers is to speak evil of no one. In other words, if you can't edify, if you don't have a word of edification, don't say it at all. It's that simple. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example. And my dear people, this can only be accomplished by learning to control our tongue. Everybody wants God to come up and just zap them with a great big bolt of lightning and, and zip their lip. <laughs> zip their lip. Amen? But we have Him given a choice. We have a free will. And we've got to come to the realization of that. It is a battle of the wills and it is fought in the mind. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now if we go back to James chapter 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. James chapter 3. Everybody still with me now? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I tried to slow down a little bit. I was a bit fast this morning. <laughs> James chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Have I got James chapter 3? Okay. I want to begin with verse 15. It says, This wisdom, speaking about strife and everything, descendeth not from above, which, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. In other words, it is of the flesh. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and, e and every evil work. And that's why it's so... So dangerous to believers to get into strife. Verse 17. But the wisdom... Did you see that there? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see, my dear people, we are to be imitators of God. We are to be imitators of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when we walk in love towards others, we are outwardly manifesting willfully the work that God has accomplished in us when we were born again. I'll say that again. When we walk in love towards others, others. We are outwardly manifesting willfully. It takes an act of our will, the work that God accomplished in us when we were born again. You say, well, Ron, I know that, but how do I, how do I do it? You, that's it. You do it. You do it. Do you understand? 
That's what God means when he talks about acting on the word. Do it. Just do it. Just do it, my dear people. And then what happens? We are imitating God. We are copying Him and following His example. By doing what? Just doing it. Walking in love. By walking in forgiveness towards our brother and before our sister and the lost and the unsaved, anybody. Just do it. It's that simple. You say, well, I don't know about that. Then shut your mouth. (laughs) Amen? Amen? You see, to be imitators of our Heavenly Father uh, and to imitate Him uh, in the way that He deals with men is what God is after. That's what He wants us to do. That's what He wants us to do. That's the reason why it says in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, Therefore be ye imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example. Why? Because in verse 2 it says, And walk in love as Christ loved us. In other words, be imitators of God. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ said in, in the, there's a scripture, Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When? When? When you imitate God. And everything He does, every action He performs, every action He's ever done is motivated by love. Amen. Period. Point blank. Point blank. And that's the reason why he's saying tonight, well, people, when you get this, we'll go on. We'll start casting out devils <laughs> or something else. But let's get this down. Let's walk in love. Let's walk in uh, uh, forgiveness towards each other and towards uh, uh, our, our brothers and sisters here and there and everywhere else. Let's walk in unforgiveness and love. I mean, forgiveness and love towards uh, 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 the lost and the unsaved. Because, my dear people, if we can't walk in love and forgiveness, we're not going to get anybody saved. Are you with me? And, my dear people, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, as imitators of God, our actions must be motivated out of love. Not from anger or self-seeking or for power or for anything else. Because I'll tell you something, my dear people. Every time a believer freely forgives when we are wronged, I don't care what they may have done, we are imitating God. When a believer, when we give to others and expect nothing in return, what are we doing? We are imitating God. The Word says in 1 John 3, 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God because He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You see, because, my dear people, it is an act of our will. Amen? It is an act of our will. So I want to point out to you this evening is... Walking in love and being imitators of Christ means preferring of the others above ourselves. It means forgiving others when they have wronged us. It means loving others even when they don't return that love. It means imitating Christ instead of the world. No one uh, will walk in the love of God until he makes a quality and I mean a quality decision to do so. To do what? To imitate God. But why? Because we have a free will. What today's Christian do is they sit and they wait for God to change them. Isn't that true? They wait for God to hit them with a bolt of lightning or something to change them. And God is sitting there waiting on us. Isn't it true? He's waiting on us. So a quality decision, a firm decision will enable the believer to walk on in love. To imitate God, we have to use our will. Then we will be imitators of God, manifesting His love to those around us as we exercise the use of our free will. It's that simple. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord was tell us this evening, therefore be imitators of God, of our Father, and copy Him. And follow His example as well-beloved children imitate their Father. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.